and welcome to the Lazy Book Club podcast, the book club for those who don't want to read or leave the house. My name is Matt Gonzalez. I'm David Cox. And I'm Josh Matheson. And this week we are looking at chapter nine of Peter Pan, which is The Neverbird. It is The Neverbird. Yes, I was listening yeah. to it yesterday. I was doing a last minute 10 o'clock edit before it came out. Today. Swatting up before yeah. the recording. <laughs> That's... So last week we ended with a cliffhanger of Peter Pan might not make it off of Maruna's Rock. It was pretty heartbreaking, actually. Mm. Almost literally a cliffhanger. I don't think yeah. it's hanging off a cliff, but it's the closest we've got. So. <laughs> he is in peril, though. So yes. the Lost Boys were sunbathing and interrupted the pirates trying to kill Tiger Lily by leaving her on Maruna's Rock. Peter Pan impersonated Captain Hook and got them to release her. Then a fight ensued and Captain Hook clawed Peter twice with his hook and all of the pirates got away. But the boys ended up taking the boat and thought that Wendy and Peter might make their own way back to the island. But Wendy and Peter are in fact stuck on the rock still. And then Michael's kite blew up on the shore and Peter sent Wendy off on it. And Peter's sat there all alone waiting for the inevitable drowning that's coming. I was thinking about this. Part of me thinks he's like, he's one of these people that will allow things to happen so that he has a story to say. Right. Like, there was probably opportunities for him to get home, but he would rather have a better story to tell. Like I've, it's I've, true. Got, a fr- I've got a friend like that who he went on a big, long bike ride uh, during the lockdown and he, his, his tire burst and people offered him lifts um and to and to fix his puncture and all that sort of thing he's like no no i'll walk home and then he moaned about it for the rest of the day (laughs) it's like we people offered you and then he went out another time and he didn't bring a puncture repair kit and only brought six fox glassier mints to to eat (laughs) that essential item your weight you're it's like you're you're doing as many things as possible so that drama happens yeah i think this is what peter pan does it was these high drama people isn't it But then that is uh, fitting for Peter because in the flight chapter, it did say that he does everything at the last minute as well. Mm -hmm. If someone needs saving, I'll do it at the last minute because it's more exciting and it's more interesting. So he may be pulling something out the bag. Yeah, he is. He's an adrenaline junkie. So it'll be interesting to see if he pulls something out the bag last minute just before he goes under or something. Uh, We'll see what happens. The Neverbird, Jay and Barry again, not really giving much away in terms of where this chapter could be heading. No, so, I just thought it was going to, because the Neverbird was mentioned like super briefly, and I just thought it was going to be one of those passing whims, and then yeah. all of a sudden, an entire chapter. Yeah, it seems to be integral to the story. So who yeah. knew? Who but knew? We're all kind of going into this chapter blind. Last chapter, I had an idea of what was going to happen because it's in the film, but the Neverbird never appeal, appears in the film. So we're all blind in terms of what could happen with this. So I'm actually quite interested in. I don't know chapter. why, but th- in my head, this never bird looks like Kevin from up. Yes. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> Definitely. Snipe. Here, snipey, snipey. <laughs> That's what Peter Kevin's a do. girl. <laughs> it's a snipe. There's only two chapters on two little paragraphs on lit charts about this chapter. So it's either really short or really boring. <laughs> Yeah, nothing happens. <laughs> it is quite short. I'll give you that. Should we jump in then? Find out yeah. what he's like. See if Jane Berry actually does a description of the Neverbird or if he does a, a carol and just goes, the Neverbird. Oh, don't. And just that's it. It's a picture. <laughs> Neverbird was sitting on an S. Look at the picture. <laughs> let's, not, let's not rehash all of the, uh, the vitriol, Matt, you had towards him <laughs> about the mock turtle. Yeah. Chapter nine. The Neverbird. The last sound Peter heard before he was quite alone were the mermaids retiring one by one to their bedchambers under the sea. He was too far away to hear their doors shut, but every door in the coral caves where they live rings a tiny bell when it opens or closes, as in all the nicest houses on the mainland, and he heard the bells. Steadily the waters rose till they were nibbling at his feet and to pass the time until they made their final gulp, he watched the only thing on the lagoon. He thought it was a piece of floating paper, perhaps part of the kite, and wondered idly how long it would take to drift ashore. 
Presently he noticed as an odd thing that it was undoubtedly out upon the lagoon with some definite purpose, for it was fighting the tide, and sometimes winning. And when it won, Peter, always sympathetic to the weaker side, could not help clapping. It was such a gallant piece of paper. So Peter's sitting on an island, waiting About to, to die, die. Yeah, and he's, he's going, like, yeah, 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 the paper! <laughs> the paper made it over the, over the wave, woo! Yeah, it's like priorities che- are not in order. No. It's actually like cheering on a crisp packet in the wind, isn't it? It's like yeah. poo sticks, but without the competition or anyone to yeah. kind of compete against. Yeah. I think this is the first stage, isn't it? Denial? Isn't that the first stage of grief? Probably. <laughs> it was not really a piece of paper. It was the never bird making desperate efforts to reach Peter on the nest. By working her wings, in a way she had learned since the nest fell into the water, she was able to some extent to guide her strange craft. But by the time Peter recognised her, she was very exhausted. So the never bird's just like canoeing her way over. In, in, just in, kayaking in the nest. her way in the nest. Yeah, it's like, Front crawl. Nice. Wouldn't it be okay. devastated after, or like, we're thinking, oh, there's going to be some sort of rescue, and the never bird is, like, suddenly flightless, like a dodo. Yeah, he's like, a, yeah, an ostrich. <laughs> I've come but to rescue you. <laughs> if, she, if she's got a little Penguin. nest, though, you know, she might be able to be like, hop in here. She had come to save him, to give him her nest, though there were eggs in it. I rather wonder at the bird, for though he had been nice to her, he had also sometimes tormented her. I can only suppose that, like Mrs. Darling and the rest of them, she was melted because he had all his first teeth. This is still really creepy. The whole first how teeth people thing. think, Yeah, how people think that baby teeth are really cute. For some reason, for me, something with tiny little teeth is just terrifying. <laughs> Do you well, know what I mean? Not- like, could you imagine anything worse than a baby? Imagine a baby being born with a full set of teeth. Yeah, that's terrifying, yeah. That's what I mean. That's not cute. Have you ever seen the x-ray of a child's mouth with all of the... So it's the got adult the adult teeth, teeth behind. behind. Oh, it grew... Ooh. Oh, no. Like a shark. Ooh. It is savage. That is creepy. She called out to him what she had come for, and he called out to her what she was doing there. But, of course, neither of them understood the other's language. In fanciful stories, people can talk to birds freely, and I wish for the moment I could pretend that this was such a story, and say that Peter replied intelligently to the never bird, but truth is best, and I want to tell you only what really happened. Well, not only could they not understand each other, but they forgot their manners. And this is where we start to hear the bird sort of talking in some kind of strange... Is he of speaking course. in English? But obviously, yeah. So it's written in English. You're hearing the intent, but Peter hears just squawks or something. Exactly. We're getting the translation here. So, what does the Neverbird sound? What does she sound like? Can we make him kind of like sea gully? It's like, a girl, mine? Matt. Mine? It's a it's a lady. Oh. So say so seagulls can't be girls. Well, Sexist. I was gonna yeah, or add like a Donald Ducky <laughs> kind of thing on there because you know he kind of talks through a quack. Yeah. Uh, literally can't. Remember what Donald Duck sounds like. I can't. I, can't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope. I love that we've finally mind. found an accent that Josh can't do. Oh yeah, duck. That famous accent. Yeah, it's duck a spotlight. Accent. <laughs> yeah, General American, Yorkshire, duck, Italian. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we, maybe we go back to more of a sea gully kind of kind of vibe uh, something seagully yeah okay. mine okay mine yeah uh, okay yeah. i want you to get into the uh, nest <laughs> <laughs> i've no idea i think it worked is. fine yeah okay great if you're happy yeah great. i don't the think bird. she talks for very long i hope not <laughs> she's got a song <laughs> yeah, Be- it's the Bee Gees. It's an entire song. <laughs> Let's all agree that if the if the if the Neverbird ever has a, ever has a song, it's got to be Bee Gees style. Yeah. Well, oh, okay, ah, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Neverbird. Neverbird. <laughs> 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 Neverbird. 
The bird called, speaking as slowly and distinctly as possible. <laughs> and then you can drift ashore, but I am too tired to bring it any nearer, so you must try to swim to it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's literally. Can I just? Uh, I want to exp- slightly justify my choice here. Every single word is. There's no spaces. It's just a hyphen between each word. Ah. So it's written like word hyphen word hyphen word. So he's obviously in the punctuation trying to give it that sense of ah 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 ah. Yeah, you know that so. kind of yeah squawking. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't sound like squawking. <laughs> Did it sound like sex noises? Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, well, a little insight to my personal life there. <laughs> <laughs> or David's, because he's the one who says it sounds like it. <laughs> yes, apparently. <laughs> what are you quacking about? Peter answered. Why don't you let the nest drift as usual? I want you, the bird said, and repeated it all over. Then Peter tried slow and distinct. What are you quacking about (laughs) (laughs) and so on the never bird became irritated they have very short tempers you done the head little jay she screamed why don't you do as i tell you (laughs) the little squawk i like the little squeak at the end yeah (laughs) (laughs) peter felt that she was calling him names and at a venture he retorted hotly so were you <laughs> then rather curiously they both snapped out the same remark shut, shut up, up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> this is sounding like a british person in benadorm <laughs> where it's like can i have some chips please care chips <laughs> Care? Por favor. Chips. <laughs> it's like lost in translation. Shouting Uno omelette, por favor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, the bird was determined to save him if she could. And by one last mighty effort, she propelled the nest against the rock. Then up she flew, deserting her eggs so as to make her meaning clear. Then at last he understood and clutched the nest, and waved his thanks to the bird as she fluttered overhead. It was not to receive his thanks, however, that she hung there in the sky. It was not even to watch him get into the nest. It was to see what he did with her eggs. There were two large white eggs, and Peter lifted them up and reflected. The bird covered her face with her wings, so as not to see the last of them, but she could not help peeping between the feathers. If I was in that situation and I had two massive eggs that I was trying to keep hold of, I'd definitely put them down my shirt and pretend they were boobs. <laughs> Just saying. I'm not saying that's his priority right. at the moment because the time's No, but when, when she's like <laughs> waiting to see what Peter was going to do with the eggs, I'd blatantly just imagine him sitting there like... <laughs> <laughs> you child. Hey, he's a child, so this is yeah. what I'm expecting him to do. Yeah, I'll, but he's I'll a grow child. Up, Peter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But she said technically she's completely come to terms with the fact that he might just grab her eggs and throw them into the sea or something and like that's quite a big sacrifice on her part i forget whether i have told you that there was a stave on the rock driven into it by some buccaneers of long ago to mark the site of buried treasure the children had discovered the glittering hoard and when in a mischievous mood used to fling showers of moidors diamonds pearls and pieces of eight to the gulls who pounced on them for food and then flew away, raging at the scurvy trick that had been played upon them. I'm amazed the pirates haven't found it. If they've been taking people to Maroona's Rock all this time to kill them, yeah. I mean, unless the pirates have added to it, I don't know. But you'd think that Captain Hook and his band of men would be interested in treasure. Fee true. The stave was still there, and on it Starkey had hung his hat a deep tarpaulin, watertight, with a broad rim. Peter put the eggs into his hat and set it on the lagoon. It floated beautifully. The neverbird saw at once what he was up to and screamed her admiration of him. And, alas, Peter crowed his agreement with her. Then he got into the nest, 
reared the stave in as its mast, and hung up his shirt for a sail. At the same moment the bird fluttered down upon the hat, and once more sat snugly on her eggs. She drifted in one direction, and he was borne off in another, both cheering. Of course, when Peter landed, he beached his bark, small ship, actually the Neverbird's nest in this particular case in point, in a place where the bird would easily find it. But the hat was such a great success that she abandoned the nest. It drifted about till it went to pieces, and often Starkey came to the shore of the lagoon, and with many bitter feelings watched the bird sitting on his hat. <laughs> so, oh, nick my hat. As we shall not see her again, it may be worth mentioning here that all neverbirds now build in that shape of nest, with a broad brim on which the youngsters take an airing. Great were the rejoicings when Peter reached the home under the ground, almost as soon as Wendy, who had been carried hither and thither by the kite. Every boy had adventures to tell, but perhaps the biggest adventure of all was that they were several hours late for bed, this so inflated them that they did various dodgy things to get staying up still longer, such as demanding bandages. But Wendy, though glorying in having them all home again, safe and sound, was scandalised by the lateness of the hour and cried, To bed! To bed! in a voice that had to be obeyed. Next day, however, she was awfully tender and gave out bandages to everyone, and they played till bedtime at limping about and carrying their arms in slings. End of chapter. That day was a write-off then. They did like, they had, the, the day before there was like adventure sword fights, and then they spent a whole day going, oh, my arm. Let's pretend to have yeah. a sore arm. <laughs> that was definitely Sunday in Neverland, wasn't it? It's like <laughs> yeah. There are kids who are like that, though. If, if you have um, plasters with their favourite cartoon character on it or something like that, mm. you'll always see them going, oh, I need a plaster on my knee, and it's just because they want Thomas the Tank we, Engine on their knee. My, it's got nothing to who do with anything. At my primary school, my infant school, they used to have like stickers for doing good work but they also had an i bumped my head sticker so that the kid had it on their jumper <laughs> so that mum mum or dad when they were picking them up like oh so little knew little they had a concussion but <laughs> everyone saw that as like a proper like badge of honor or like a cool thing to have so people were like i went to war i li- no i literally fight. i literally remember like hitting my head on purpose on like the side of the little wooden train i'd be like look i've hurt myself and getting a sticker you have to got the sticker. There's just David headbutting the wall intentionally. Have I done it? Collect all five. <laughs> you really were the special one in the class, weren't you, David? Yeah. Well, that was quite uneventful, really, as a chapter, and very short. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, th- I don't quite see why that chapter wasn't just tacked on to the end of the last one. But there wasn't any peril. Like, in every single no. chapter, there's been some sort of, like, obstacle. But that was like, yeah, bird turns up. You can use my nest. Bye. Bye. Yeah. I got home. The only peril was they were late for bedtime. I just feel that maybe he left the last chapter where he did, just so it seemed like it was going to be more of a cliffhanger. Yeah. Because I understand if he'd gone all the way to the end and made it all one chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the last chapter, like, ended in such a way. That was a good place to have a commercial break, wasn't it? At the end yeah. of the last chapter. But you'd expect there to be more on the other side of it. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, like, other than the fact they couldn't understand each other for a minute, it all just went quite smoothly, didn't it? I would have ended the chapter probably with the bit where Hook strikes Peter twice and then, like, the Lost Boys seeing him go down yeah. and end it there and then do the whole thing of them trying to get off the rock as the next chapter afterwards because then it have yeah. a bit more meat to it. Because then you still get that, is he dead, is he not? Yeah, true. Um, there's not really much to analyse with that, I don't think. Well, no, I'm kind of looking at lit charts here. Lit charts! It just kind of says more of an analysis just to find out why Peter saves the eggs. Kind of shows that he has a little bit of... He, maybe he could see the care and the anxiety of the bird and was trying, obviously, to help because she's helping him. So it shows that Peter does have some kind of good qualities as well. He is able to empathize with another creature out, you know, away from himself. Cause that's something we've been quite worried about with him up till now. There has been a distinct lack of empathy on his part. We talked a lot about uh, Peter and Hook being really, really similar. And I thought yeah. said, I quite like the fact he does have some 
qualities that make him a hero. And then we're like, but does he? Um, and I think like now he's done a couple of things. He's you know, he saved Wendy's life over his own, even though he was probably the one who got everyone into trouble in the first place. But, you know, it, when push came to shove, he made that choice. And here again, he valued life over destruction, which I think is another one of those things that just categorizes a hero over a... Yeah. Although what's quite funny is the next sentence just completely throws what I just said in through a bit of a loop because it says actually perhaps he helps her simply because she helped him and the rules of fairness would require it ah. it is not necessary to feel anything in order to follow a rule so it's also then putting a spanner in the works and saying that maybe peter helps because fairness requires it and his obligation to being fair rather than actually because he empathizes in any way with the burden its situation Oh, I don't like that one as much. No, I know. Does that mean he, so it's kind like, of like, should he be doing that for everything in life? Like every... Making everything Yeah, fair. like down to the smallest things. So you could even say then that this that rescuing Wendy was like, oh, well, when you first arrived, you know, the people that I'm responsible for nearly killed you. So now to balance that out, I should save your life. Yeah, maybe you could say that, yeah, even go further and say that his sacrifice was merely paying back rather than actually because of any kind of feelings so, but now if he was even so if if in the terms of that sort of f fair equilibrium paradox and now they're even so now if wendy was in peril would he just shrug his shoulders and go i don't know yeah, you anything and just leave her to it <laughs> we're all square now <laughs> well i i i don't i don't think that him saving wendy was because of fairness he does no. definitely have a special place for mothers and his mother figure in wendy as he said in the earlier chapter you know we serve wendy because she's um her she's our mum and girls are worth more than boys are because they're mothers so he definitely has this higher view of mothers and wendy as a result of that so i feel like he probably saved her because he defers to her in that way and sees her as an authority figure even though she doesn't really technically have any kind of authority because she is a girl at the end of the day rather than an adult. It's all they've got. Yeah. So what's coming up in the next chapter then? I'm hoping that we kind of get to something a bit more meaty. The chapter before uh, the pirates made a little thing about, oh, maybe we should steal Wendy and make her our mother and make the boys walk the plank. So I'm hoping that that, plan doesn't disappear like the chocolate cake one does and actually materializes into some kind of story arc for the rest of the book well just looking at the the title of the chapter it doesn't fill me with you know excitement mild peril and oh dear and what adventure. is it it's just chapter, like the chapter, train. the darling goes to <laughs> hell <up>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, chapter 10 is called the happy home Oh, we've done yeah. that. <laughs> I know we did all that business, haven't we? We did the home yeah. under the ground. We've done he, all the. He loves uh, a twee title, doesn't he, Barry? Hopefully, it's the opposite. Very like, twee. hopefully, like Captain Hook, like burns everything. Yeah, but if you read just the chapter titles, I would expect a book like something Beatrix Potter, yeah. or it's got right? that kind of yeah. very country, nice, no one dies nothing bad happens all the chapters have that kind of vibe about them mm. and i'm like this is an event a children's adventure novel like this should have some kind of treasure island high stakes black spot people coming after you then again we're only a little way over halfway through this book so but maybe... this is it we're halfway through the book <laughs> oh yeah equally we are halfway through i should through the know book. where it's going i should <laughs> have some kind of there should have been a setup there should have been a this is what our heroes are trying to achieve yeah. and and it's obviously a thing of the era because alice's adventures in wonderland was exactly the same we got halfway through the book and i'm like i still don't know what alice is trying to achieve or what she wants it's like a mini saga she's just kind of bumbling along and life well, just kind of with, happens to her with alice we didn't even know that by the end because no he did so absurd like she just about grows as a person just yeah but you wonder if this is the thing of the genre is it just this is that what was in fashion just these stories of these children who go on these marvelous adventures but really they're just like a leaf on a stream just kind of being pushed wherever they need to go by the author rather than actually taking any kind of 
dis, you know, uh, decision making or choices to actually direct their own destiny or try and actually achieve something. There's got to be. I mean, this is a piratey, you know, redskins and 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 little whatever's kind of a wild animals. There's got to be something that's coming up, surely. Murderous mermaids. I just all, all I want is somebody to make a plan and try and action it. That's that's all I want. I just want someone to be decisive. We want a super objective here. Yeah, I want an objective. I want an end goal. And at least the pirates have given me that. Let's kidnap Wendy and make her our, our, our mother. Okay, great. Someone's trying to achieve something. Maybe the kids don't have the yeah, nuance because... to be able to do that. They just let stuff happen to them. Yeah, maybe the, maybe it is just a wider thing of, of Barry again trying to make a comment on children and the fact that really, yeah, as children, life happens to you because you are not in control of your own destiny because your parents make the like decisions Like when they found the you. treasure, was that just circumstantial? Well, yeah, I think so. They just happened upon it. They weren't like, oh, we heard, we heard, we heard through the grapevine that the pirates bury some treasure, so let's nick it and feed it to the seagulls. They were just like, ugh. No, there were probably just sunbathing and found it and thought, haha, let's pretend it's food and get the birds to eat it. Not let's gather it all together and buy a limousine or something. <laughs> That'd be a random chapter. Yeah. Oh no, there's no <laughs> roads. Just the lost boys in a strip club, just like making it rain. <laughs> <laughs> Tinkerbell's there, just like. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, as, as uh, Josh said, her red bedroom definitely sounded like a. A borrower's whorehouse. Yes, so. <laughs> You're a borrower, not a whore. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got any comments or insights about this chapter, we'd love to hear them because we don't know what to make of it. And you can email us on thelazybookclub at gmail.com. Or hit us up on Twitter. We are at lazybookclubpod. And we're exactly the same on our Instagram at Lazy Book Club Pod. We really do appreciate you guys sticking with us through lockdown. We know that with people not commuting to places that uh, podcasts haven't been listened to as much, people don't have the time as much because they're staying at home. So we really do appreciate you guys sticking with us and listening through the book with us. Do keep getting in contact. We love to see your messages. We love to hear your ideas. We love to see your fan art. I think David yes, Dickfingers is a favourite of mine. <laughs> <laughs> so please do keep it coming in. And we will see you next week for a happy home. The happy home. The happy home. Damn it, got the word wrong. We'll <laughs> see you then. <laughs>